Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're starting our Professor Snape project today. This is part one. We're going to do a little prep work and the face up. Okay, it's time to start our project where we're going to try to make Professor Snape. I did actually print out a couple of pictures just to look at while we're while we're working on this and uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is when you're when you're talking about trying to make a doll look like another character is uh, facial features are really important and the mold of the doll is very important because it's going to give you a base to work with. You can apply color and you can apply shadow and lines and whatever but if you got a great big grin on, on the face of your doll it's really hard to cover that up with you know make it more of a frown. And let's face it Snape was pretty much always frowning. I don't even remember him smiling. I'm kind of trying to remember if he ever smiled. Anyway, um, so uh, that's what I looked for when I was looking for a base doll is uh, facial features that I could look for. Uh, now, the skin tone did play a part because I, it actually worked in my favor for the certain doll. I'll, I'll show you in a minute, but uh, that wasn't as necessary as the base facial features. And also I was looking for, uh, you know, something... He's kind of got little high, high cheekbones too, so um, that was another thing to look at, and, and no smile. So that's going to be my picture to look at for his face, and also, you know, we're going to redo his hair, and uh, I'm going to use alpaca fiber for that because it's it's nice and uh, it's very fine, so you can you can control it and make it fall in in the ways that you want, unlike the mohair that I've worked with <laughs> recently. So um, that was that picture, and then I found this kind of cool picture uh, of his costume. Let's see if I can get this to where you can really see that in detail. I know you can't because it's like all black. It's like a black blur. But anyway, he's got the black coat that comes down like to his almost to yeah to his knees, and it's not overlapped. That's the other thing is it's buttoned but it's not like an overlapped coat. It's uh, got these little small, uh, probably they were fabric covered buttons so we're gonna have to come up with a way to do that that looks uh, somewhat similar and uh, then he had just like a regular black trousers sort of just a basic black shoe. His trousers were kind of narrow down the bottom part of his leg. Uh, there were times when I thought he wore boots but it was just that these his trousers kind of come down and cover the shoe at the bottom and they're sort of tighter around this part of his leg so we'll work on some shoes and some pants for that and then he has this over robe that it, it uh, is kind of like a short sleeve, cap sleeve up here and uh, so this is like the sleeve of his coat on his arm but this over sleeve this over uh, cloak comes down over that and then hangs open in front and then the the top of his jacket is a sort of stand-up collar and in some of the pictures you can see that he has, also has a little bit of a white possible shirt collar sticking up but uh, not very noticeable so oh and also looks like some cuffs I'm not gonna make him a uh, white shirt because uh, I don't want to it'd be hard <laughs> But also, I don't. I think it's going to uh, kind of distract from me trying to get the coat to fit. The, the, this coat is kind of fitted. So what I'll do is make the coat, and then I'll probably insert just some uh, little cuffs up under the sleeves and glue them in, or whatever, in a in a collar. And uh, then that'll be the costume. Now for the shoes. Uh, oh, well, let's talk about the doll first. Okay. So I already had this. This is a Ken doll that I bought at a thrift store for fifty cents. Now he, he's not really smiling, but um, his, I don't know, I I just didn't feel like he would work. I kind of wanted to use a, a jointed doll too, and, and he's not jointed. Also his hand here is a little bit garbled up, so um, if I'm going to, you know, sell this to somebody, I don't want to have, have it be like that bad. So I kind of ruled him out, and then I actually went to Amazon and was looking at the different doll male dolls that they had um, this is a ball jointed doll which was not that expensive but um, he's got a pretty sick and looking little grin <laughs> you can see that and uh, also the hair is 
well, I mean, that was going to cut it off anyway, but I thought, well, maybe I could use the body with another doll head. And I really liked the face of this doll for Snape. If you could see, he's almost already got like a scowl and and definitely not not smiling. And the tone of his skin is, is very white because this is Jacob from the Twilight doll series. So he's a vampire anyway and has very light skin. So I ended up uh, deciding to use this doll. Um, he's His head would not have fit on this body anyway and I really like it that he can tilt his head at least side to side that's one nice feature about this doll because tilted heads can give you you know a kind of different look when you're posing them he has one arm bent and then one arm straight and his legs are straight and he's not jointed um, so I'm not gonna try to use a jointed doll I'm gonna use this doll I like his facial features and uh, I think I can We'll try to get his uh, face to look like Snape, my first male doll. We are going to get rid of this hair in a minute. So anyway, <laughs> goodbye to this guy. That's a creepy looking car right there. Whew. Anyway, um, what I wanted to show you about the shoes is this doll came with these shoes, which are uh, like a sneaker look. And I uh, want to try to get just a basic black shoe. Now, these are Ken shoes. Ken, they, these fit Ken doll, but these feet are bigger. I tried it and it, <clears throat> it definitely will not fit. It's just a little bit too small. So what I did is I tried scraping the white off with an X-Acto knife and I've got down to this far, which I think is going to look okay. If you can, Let me zoom in on that a little bit. can see yeah so I think if I work on it uh, I can paint over any areas I have to and just scrape off the white so uh, that's what I'm gonna do with with the shoes that will actually fit him and then uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off his hair <laughs> all right so this is uh, sort of the overview we're gonna get started so let me prep him and I'll be right back Okay, here's our doll without his clothes on. Whee! <laughs> now we're going to take all of the facial features off with some acetone. And I'm just using a Q-tip here. You can use whatever. You could use a cotton pad or tissue or whatever. Um, I like the Q-tip because it helps you get into the smaller places like the eye sockets and the lips and everything. And making sure I just get all the dirt off of his face, all the factory uh, shading whatever was on there and get down to the natural skin tone so now that we've done that part we're going to get rid of this this hair it's actually kind of nice hair for a for a mass-produced doll <laughs> but um, all those Twilight characters had nice hair didn't they especially Edward <laughs> so I'm just cutting this as close to the scalp as I can because we're gonna go into the scalp and try to pull it out and the less you have on the outside the easier it is to pull it out all right so now that I've gotten rid of all that then we can uh, work on getting the inside out and that has all that glue in it if you know what I'm talking about I hate that nasty glue and this one this doll had I don't know it was I don't know if it's uh, more knots on the inside or a different kind of glue but it was really hard to get out harder than the monster high now, my technique for doing this uh, is different from a lot of people. I just cut the top of their head off. And I do this uh, mostly because of my hands. Uh, if you follow me, you know I have really severe arthritis in my hands. I've already had two operations on my thumbs. And uh, my dexterity is somewhat limited. And also, sometimes just using pressure with my fingers causes pain. So it's easier for me to do it this way than it is to take the head off and try to pull the hair out from the inside of the neck, which a lot of people do. So what I use is just a sharp object to sort of pull up the hair and then either tweezers and if, and if uh, like this one was really tough, uh, what I'll do is resort to my hemostat. You can get these uh, at medical stores or I got, actually got these at West Marine in the fishing section. So 
a lot of fishing uh, sections and stores will have them for fishermen using to get the hooks out of fish and stuff. So uh, they're very handy. And so I'll like grasp the hair and then twist it and that pulls it out. And these work really well. So this is after having pulled all the hair out and gotten all the uh, rest of the color off of the scalp with some acetone. And now we're going to put a scalp back on. And I don't have a problem with this. It doesn't really show that much. So I don't know, maybe there's a real doll, dolly law reason for not doing it. But for me, it's the easiest way to do it. And causes me the less pain. So uh, just got to match up the places where you cut it. To make sure you get it back on the right way. And since I cut this kind of lopsided, it wasn't too hard to figure out where it went. And I'm going to put a little bit of E6000 around on the top. Sorry I'm out of frame there. Sometimes when I'm doing this with the close-up, I end up pulling it closer to me so I can see. <laughs> and then it gets out of frame. Uh, but just put a little bit of that E6000 on there, and that, that holds it really well. I did uh, wash this really good. I, I put acetone and then also the... I washed it with soap and water to get the residue of that glue off that uh, was on the hair and that makes sure that you'll get a nice good contact with the E6000. And then I sort of used my fingers to get rid of any of the excess glue that that squishes out and there you go it's heads back on. Doing this always reminds me of Ray Liotta in that last Hannibal Lecter movie where he cut his head off and he was eating his brain. That was so funny. Oh, so stupid. Anyway, uh, here's our doll with his head back on and uh, the paint off his face. And I've prepped his face with some Liquitex Matte Medium and let it dry. I used uh, two, I believe we used two coats on this particular doll. And now we're ready to start drawing in the facial features. And... If you look at Snape, you know, this is the picture I'm kind of going by. He does have sort of a scowl and uh, a lot of lines on his face. So we're going to make use of those to try to get this face to look like a Snape face. And we're also going to draw the eyes uh, similar to how his look. He has sort of a hooded lid. And once I finish this, I'm going to go back and show you the te techniques that I use to draw in the features. Uh, so we'll get these done and then we'll go back and do that. I'm uh, using some Arteza pencils today. I just wanted to try these out. I actually lost my black pencil out of my Faber-Castell set. I, it's probably here in my little studio room somewhere, but there's so many things in here that uh, kind of gets messy sometimes. I've looked everywhere. So anyway, I had to buy another black pencil and I couldn't find just the black pencil. So uh, I saw these pencils advertised and I thought, hey, well, I'll just give them a try. I'm always looking for better ways to apply the color. And uh, these seem to be working pretty well. We'll say they're not as hard. They're uh, kind of easy to break, uh, easier than the Faber-Castell. But uh, I think that as far as going on, the color going on, they, they work pretty well. I got these at, on Amazon, and I uh, think you can get them other places, but uh, that's just, I was looking on Amazon already for some pencils, and that's when I found them. So um, now just sort of coloring in, and I'm putting in some of those lines on his face, uh, coloring in the nostrils. Uh, in the picture, he has like very dark brown eyes, so um, using uh, a dark brown color for these wrinkles and the shading on his face. His nose has kind of a bump in it up uh, at the ridge so I'm using shading to try to recreate that. His nose is a little bit hooked and that's that's not really that easy to achieve but uh, we'll try to do some some things with the shading. I'm using mostly black, brown, and white. I did use a little bit of a it's sort of a reddish brown for the lips. It's, uh, it almost looks kind of orange on the film, but it was sort of a reddish brown. I'm, a, I'm just trying to get a natural lip color, 
and make it look as though, uh, you know, he's he's just got, you know, normal natural lips. A lot of times on the female dolls, of course, we may use pink or another color to look like they have maybe a little color to their lips. So now I'm just trying to add elements to add dimension, a darking in between the part of the lips, of the nostrils, the philtrum, and little shadows there, and those creases that come down on the side of his nose to his mouth. And uh, so now we've got, that's him from the, from the picture, basically, <laughs> the scowl. But uh, I picture him, when we finish, in his costume and everything, holding out his wand, you know, with that look, sort of like, you know, he's facing danger, or there's almost a quizzical look to it, like, he's facing danger, but, you know, why are you doing this, sort of thing. And I, I guess, if you think about Professor Snape, always in conflict between good and evil, you know, trying to protect Harry Potter and yet not really liking him because of his father, and uh, his love for Lily, his mother. So uh, that's one of the things that I really love about this character. As a writer, I love characters who have conflict. They're the most interesting characters to write about. So that's why I, <clears throat> I really love Professor Snape. He's my favorite in the whole Harry Potter story. And I knew he was good from the beginning. <laughs> well, sort of good. I mean, he's He's got that side of him. And uh, I think, you know, of course, in the, in the last two films of the series, he redeemed himself, and, and Harry finally realized. So now I'm using some pastels. Uh, I have that little box that I bought where I just took some chunks out of pastels so I could have them really easily and not have to pull out the big box of pastels every time I do that. Um, that works really well for me. So uh, anyway, now I'm going to use some brown colors to add like the shadows under his eyes. He sort of has a little bit of a, a circle, you know, all those sleepless nights, pondering whether he was good or bad. <laughs> so uh, I think I guess you know the way people feel is that it was Lily, his love for Lily, that saved him, that made him a good person versus. A truly bad person which is where he was kind of headed to but due to all the things that happened in his life and how he was bullied I think is probably the reason so we're getting near the end here just adding some finishing touches around the edges I want to put some shadows around the top uh, when we start adding the hair these shadows will sort of be the shadows from the hair falling around his face Putting a little bit of shadow in the ear, and that's pretty much our Snape face. Yep, well, it's looking pretty good. Of course, it'll look better when we get hair in the costume, but I did want to show you. Uh, this is uh, overhang of his eyes. You see his hooded eyes. So this is drawn at a straight line, and then his brows go up, which make him look like he's frowning, and then these little lines... And there's the lump in his nose. I tried to shadow in and, uh, of course, those lines on either side of the nose and the lips. So to show you how we handled that here, let me get this focused. You can see we drew the straight line across the eyes to make them look hooded. And then the frown marks on his face, the shadows that come in on the nose to make it look like a bump there, and the eyebrows going up. And those marks on either side of the nose coming down. All right, so there's our face up. I did spray this with some uh, Mr. Super Clear, and I'm going to take uh, some white, just acrylic paint, and put a couple of really tiny dots in his eyes for the reflection. That makes them look a little bit more realistic. And I think that, that it turned out pretty well. I'm pretty satisfied. This is my first male doll. And certainly different than doing female dolls. But uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And I think once we get it all together, that the illusion will 
making him look like Professor Snape. I think the hair is going to have a lot to do with it. That was uh, an iconic part of him. Uh, what I'm doing right now that you can't see because I didn't have it in frame <laughs> was uh, using a little bit of high gloss varnish to put a little bit of glaze over the eyes and there you can actually see it on the lips and that's just to give it a little bit more realistic look so that's not all matte and I will put more coats on the eyes and that's it for for this part with uh, we're gonna work on the hair next I'd like to get that part done and then we can sort of protect the face and do the costume so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already because we have lots more to do with this character. And you know, I don't want you to miss a thing. So thanks and bye.